Hi, thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to be discussing Google Classroom and we're also going to be talking about the use of discussion forums in Google Classroom. In researching ways that you can hold a discussion forum in a class on Google Classroom, I haven't found a lot about the subject, but one of the things I found was an article by Alice Keeler, thanks to her for doing this work on this topic, that talks about how to use a Google Sheet to do a discussion. Now, in a lot of other learning management systems, you can do discussion forums with threaded discussions so that you can have a topic entered by a student and then it, students can reply to one another. And that's not quite what we're doing here, but it's very close. One of the things that I wanted to be able to do in my class was at least have the ability to allow my students to respond to a question or a series of questions or maybe even a series of topics and be able to see the responses of other students and be able to reply to those in different ways. It's kind of hard to do in Google Drive, but it is workable with a Google Sheet, just like I said, and we're gonna take it a little bit further and we're gonna take a look at protecting the sheet so that you can keep students from typing in areas that they're not supposed to or changing or reformatting the, uh, the view of your sheet. So. If you go back here to Google Drive, all you have to do to create a sheet is click New and click Google Sheets, but I've already created one and I'm gonna, I've called it a demo forum. And the way I've set it up here is I have a couple of topics across the top that I want them to discuss. And then along the, the A column, I've listed the names of the students in the class. And here I've just kind of kept it generic because this is a class that I teach over and over again and I just want to keep um, the demo students in there so that I can reuse this sheet. Now, like I said, this sheet, as far as sharing it with my students, uh, it is ready to go. Anybody with the link can edit this document. I'm going to leave that in place the way it is because I want all of my students to respond at the same time. And by providing them the link in Google Classroom, they can all edit the document at the same time. But like I said, I want to highlight and I want to protect these parts of the sheet. Now one of the options that you have in Excel is you have the ability to lock or protect cells in a sheet to keep the end user from editing those. But one of the difficult things is that once you've locked it, if you change your mind and you want to edit any cells or any part of that sheet, you have to then go back and unlock those cells. The great thing about Google Sheets is you can highlight a cell, go up to the Tools menu and click Protect Sheet, and I've already done that, it's over here. And I have to tell it, first of all, I don't want to protect the entire sheet, I just want to protect a range. And because I've highlighted these cells, it auto fills in the range that I want to protect. And then I click Set Permissions. I'm going to change that to only me, so that means that even though I've shared this sheet with everybody in my class or anybody that has the link to this sheet, I've protected these cells so that I'm the only one that can edit them. Now, like I said, in Excel, once you lock a cell, it cannot be edited unless you unlock it first. Here, because I'm the one that has permissions to edit, I can add uh, anything that I want to to it and it allows me to because I'm the only one with permissions. So it's very simple to do, it's very easy to work with. The other thing I need to go do is I'm going to go highlight this column because I don't want them to change this information. And I'm going to add a new sheet or range. I click range. It's already auto filled in there. Click set permissions and change it to only me. And click save. So everything that I wanted to do there is, is done. Those, those parts of the sheet are protected. Uh, I have some teachers that would probably like to highlight these other cells or at least hide them so that the students couldn't work in them. Uh, or at least protect them so they couldn't work in them because you never know what students are going to do outside of the box, so to speak. So this sheet, like I said, is ready to go. And don't forget, anytime you work in Google Docs, all changes are saved in Drive once you click that last key on your keyboard or that, sh that last click of the mouse. So I'm going to go back here to my Google Classroom class. And here is the assignment. Now, the reason I've done this as an announcement, as you can see it's an announcement, it's not an assignment, um, is because I don't have the need to necessarily give each student their own copy of it because it's going to be one live document that we'll all be working in at the same time. So it just makes it a little bit easier that way to do it as an, an announcement 
as opposed to an assignment. Plus, this is something that I'm going to be able to go back and see at a glance who participated, and I'll know uh, that they've done so, and I can just give them participation points or a grade that way, so I don't really have to grade it inside Google Drive. This is actually ready to go. Um, I can go ahead and click on this drop down and add it to my other classes if I want to, uh, but if not, I'm just going to go ahead and click Post. And of course, like anything else in Google Classroom, any students that are assigned to your class will automatically get an announcement that they're able to do this assignment. So uh, they'll get that announcement by email, and this sheet is ready to go. I'm going to pause here and jump right back in so you can see what this looks like while the students are working. And so here I am now, I've logged in as a demo student, and as I can see here, here's the announcement for discussion time. So all I have to do is click on the sheet, and it opens the sheet, and I can see here that I'm in as demo user 10. I can see myself up here, and I can see that in addition to me, uh, my teacher is also in. That's me signing in as the teacher. Now, as you can see here, there are these gray and white lines up here in these cells showing me that these are locked and I cannot edit those. And it's, I tried to double click on that cell and it says you're trying to edit a protected cell or object. So that allows me to know that I can't click in those areas and work. But I can click in any of these other areas. Now, question that you might have is what's to keep any of these other students from typing or me from typing in someone else's line and there's really not so to to uh, if you really wanted to take it a step further you could uh, probably the easier thing would be to lay out some guidelines and say only type where you're supposed to but if you wanted to you could go in and you could highlight a row for demo user one and then you can protect those cells and say that only you and demo user one can edit those cells and then so on down the line for users 2 through 17. Now that's a lot of work and honestly uh, it just all depends on whether or not you really want to go that route and do that but you do have the ability to do so if you want. Um, the other thing that uh, is talked about in some of the other online articles about this is that you could have multiple topics and you can have a sheet signed up, assigned to each group in a class so you could have group A, group B, and have tabs down here for group A and group B and have them discuss their own topics and then you could leave space for the groups to reply to one another's topics inside each sheet. So there's lots of different ways to do it. And again, it's just thinking outside of the box in terms of discussion forums. It's not the same type of threaded discussion that you would see in some learning management systems, but it still allows you to get there and get the job done. When they're finished, this is a live document, as I said, anybody can type in it uh, at the same time as anyone else because anyone with the link can edit those unprotected cells. And it's something that you can go back to over and over again, and you can see the responses of all your students uh, together in one place. So, well, that's a little bit uh, for now. Uh, we'll have more later uh, regarding Google Classroom, and thanks again for joining me.